Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Da, 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 There we go. What do you think, Hank? Well, I, 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 that, was, that wasn't so good. <laughs> okay, well, I was just trying to, you know, a little Christmassy thing. Yeah, but you jingle bell, jingle bell. I was like me going, hello, 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 hello. All right, okay, you got it. That's true, that's true. Uh, you know, here's an interesting uh, fun fact for you. Hank, which most people may not know, Jingle Bells was written by a fellow by the name of James Pierpont. James Pierpont is uh, now. I I've had I had a stepfather growing up, who uh, his James Pierpont was his great great grandfather. So, even though we're not related by blood, James Pierpont, the guy that wrote Jingle Bells, uh, was my. Stepdad, so my great 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 grandfather by proxy through stepfather or whatever. So not really. It's that's not really related, but kind of. So there you go. Well, that's that's that was a bit of a stretch. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's a bit of a stretch, but it, but most people can't say that they were you know somewhat weirdly kind of related to the guy that wrote Jingle Bells. No, that's true. Okay, well there you go. And I believe Jingle Bells is. Um, it's in the public domain, so I can sing it. So it's just fine. Look at that. There you go. Merry Christmas, everybody. You know, it's not Christmas yet, but it's going to be very soon. Uh, today is the 17th. This show is, well, t- t- today that you're listening to it is the 18th. It's because it's coming out. So I am that far behind with the podcast. Welcome to the James Arnold Taylor Podcast, everybody. I'm James Arnold Taylor. It'd be weird if I wasn't James Arnold Taylor. Although some people have people sit in on their podcasts. I sat in for my friend Tom Wilson once when he was uh, taking a break from his podcast. I did three, two or three episodes, two, I don't know. Anyways, a couple episodes of his show. You can find that big pop fun. But uh, let's get Mr. Announcer Guy in. Let's do it. Let's get moving, Hank. Let's go. All right. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. That's not how you do it. Well, you, you go ahead and do it then. Okay. Oh, Mr. Announcer Guy. Oh, yes, James. See, that's how you do it. Yeah, okay. Oh, me the announcer guy. <laughs> what was that? I was trying to sound like you, but my voice can't go that high. I need like a helium balloon. You got that, that patchy in there? You can make me sound like I got helium in my voice? It, yes, like you got helium in your voice. Yeah, go ahead and say something. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, this is Hank Oh, Mr. the announcer guy. All right, that's pretty funny. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> That reminds me of last year's Christmas special when the elf guy came in and did me. That's right. I was just listening to that episode the other day. Because I recommended, because last week we had to take a break and... Hey, am I going to get to introduce the show? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Announcer Guy. Go ahead, introduce the show, and then I'll tell the story. You get it, man. Hear that music, Jerry the Music Man. You got it, Mr. Announcer Guy. Merry Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Talking to myself... The JetCast. Today, Jet's going to tell you a bunch of stuff. That's right. That Well, that pretty much covers it. Yeah, man. So now, here he is, the same guy that's doing all the voices you're hearing, including this one. That's why it's called Talking to Myself. James Arnold Taylor! Thank you, Mr. Announcer Guy. You got it, man. I'm going to go now. And there he goes. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh. Yeah, it's the James Arnold Taylor Talking to Myself podcast, the Jatcast Talking to Myself. All the characters are me. Hey, have you watched the video of me on my YouTube channel? Have you subscribed to my YouTube channel? Did you even know I had a YouTube channel? I'm always surprised by people that follow me in some capacity, and then they find out I have a YouTube channel, or they find out I'm the voice of, you know, Fox Sundays. The Simpsons. Family Guy and Bob's Burgers. And bless the hearts. Uh, All those voices, people are surprised. But if you follow me, it's weird when you're surprised by those things. But uh, did you know I have a YouTube channel? Uh, So I have a YouTube channel and I put a video out a few, what about a month or two ago, of the JackCast, of me doing the JackCast with a camera. So you could see how I do all the voices because people go, well, is it you doing all the voices and then do you do one voice and then record the next voice and then record? No, I do it all just in one thing. I make it up as I go along. This is all just a big old ad lib. Yeah, I like the ads lib. Ad lib. Yeah, what you said. Okay, so Hank, yeah, Hank is that. 
Mr. Announce Guy Everything. So welcome to the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. I don't remember what story I was going to tell, Hank. Do you remember? Oh, you know, you were, you, uh, you were, you were uh, telling a story about the, uh, about, yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, Mr. Announcer Guy. Yes, James. You were saying about the last week you took a break. Oh, yeah, right. Thank you. You got it, man. All right. Last week I took a break from the show because I just, I had a con that weekend and I didn't get, it was just hard to get time to do an episode and I don't want to do an episode halfway. And today, I'll be honest, today's episode is not going to be very long. I'm sorry. It's just going to be kind of quick here. I'm going to share some thoughts because I don't have a lot of time today either. And I want to have more time, but it's a busy, it's the most wonderful busy time of the year, isn't it? Christmas time is here. Yep, it's busy, busy, busy. Yeah, I like that Linus guy. Thank you, Hank. That's great. Thanks for commenting. You got it, man. Oh, you you got it, man. You're being a Mr. Announcer guy. All right. So the Jack cast is going to be a little shorter here today. Uh, last night, I'm still, uh, ooh, I'm still a little crunchy sounding in my voice. Are you drinking water, everybody? Drink your water. Nothing's changing on that. Let's drink some water. Ooh, that's good water. I drink a lot. Hydrate, man. You got to hydrate. Yesterday was a crazy day. Yesterday was Monday, the uh, 16th. And yesterday I got invited to the uh, premiere, the world premiere of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. And, you know, I did voices in in the film. My voice is in there in various places, just like on the last, the other four. So all of the five Disney Star Wars films that have been made over the last five years I have been in them, thanks to my good friend, Matthew Wood, who is, of course, General Grievous in the Battle Droids, as well as an Oscar-nominated, and he should be an Oscar-winning because he's fantastic. He's Oscar-winning in my book, uh, sound designer and uh, creator of amazing sounds for the world of Star Wars. Uh, And he was mentored by Ben Burt, who is one of my heroes, and Matt is uh, just a wonderful human being, and there you go. Thanks to Matt, I've been able to have my voice in all these films. So my voice and my name is credited in Rise of Skywalker. So I got to go to the premiere and they had all of us. Now, this is the first time Disney has ever invited the Clone Wars cast to come to a premiere. And and the cool thing was, is they also invited the cast of Resistance and the cast of Rebels, which again, they've never really done. So we all got to be there and it was kind of uh, just unexpected. It was really unexpected, but it was very cool. And then tonight I'm going to see the film again with my buddy, James Burns, who is a filmmaker, indie filmmaker, follow him on social media, indie filmmaker, indie, like I and like Indiana Jones, because he's a big Indiana Jones fan, but he's also an independent filmmaker. See, he's done a little thing there. So James and I are going to hit the El Capitan theater and watch it again. So I will see it again tonight for the family and friends viewing of rise of Skywalker. Now I'm not going to get into my, what I thought about the movie. I'm not going to do that. Everybody wants to know that here's the only thing I will say about the movie. It's extremely well-made. It is extremely thought out, extremely meticulously written and well-planned and put together and, uh, and, and extremely, uh, and a beautiful film to look at. Uh, I'm not going to give my thoughts and opinions on stories and things like that. You know why? Everybody's doing that. And, and you know what? I'm going to let you decide on your own. You know Why? Because by the time this comes out, the movie hasn't even come out yet. So I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to say anything. I want everybody to be surprised on their own. I remember many years ago interviewing Mark Hamill on the stage at Disney Star Wars Weekends. And it was when they were shooting Force Awakens. And and Mark and I were talking about how we don't like spoilers. And I don't like spoilers. I just don't. Here's the big spoiler. Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father. And he's Kylo Ren's grandfather. There you go. Whoop! Big spoiler alert. (laughs) I want people to be surprised because when I was a kid and I went to the, back in my day, when I was a kid and went to the movies, I was surprised by things. I was surprised when I went to see Empire Strikes Back and and heard, you know, Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No, I am your father. No, no, that's not true. That's impossible. And then he jumps. You didn't see it coming. 
You know why? There was no there was no social media. There was no cell phones. There was no internet. There was no press spoiling it. I mean, you know, press would spoil it wherever they could, I guess. But it it was a surprise. I want you all to be surprised by everything in this. And I think here's what I think. Here's the only review I will give. I think people are going to love this movie. There you go. So that's it. What I will talk about is the wonderful time I had with Catherine Tabor and Matt Lanter and Dee Bradley Baker and Ashley Eckstein. And I got to see my buddy Ahmed Best and I got to see David Collins and I got to see uh, Ian McDiarmid and Stuart, his manager, good friends of mine, people I love. I got to spend time with my dear friend Frank Oz and his lovely, lovely wife, Victoria. And so we just had a, a wonderful time. And that's really all I can say is it was, and my daughter and my wife got to come because we were each allowed one guest. And so I brought my daughter and then Catherine Tabor, who is like a sister to me and who loves my wife uh, as well, invited her to be her guest. So my whole family got to go. So we all got to go together, which was very, very sweet. And, uh, and again, a big surprise because I was expecting to just go to the family and friends viewing, which I'm going to tonight. So, and Tracy Canobio, I got to hang out with him. Bonnie Burton, I got to see, and I got to see all, all these wonderful folks. Um, and another James Burns. There's two James Burns I know that are good friends of mine that are good Star Wars fans. And that uh, one is British and one is not. And I got to see my British James Burns friend as well. So there you go. Uh, but many people I got to see and say, hello, hello there. And, and so many wonderful fans. And if you're a listener to this, so some of you in the so the fans that were there they have here's the thing it was a blue carpet it was huge they closed down all of hollywood boulevard all of hollywood boulevard for this whole strip there this whole section in front of uh, the man's chinese or the chinese theater the dolby theater and the el capitan theater and they sh- played all of them sequentially all at the same time in three theaters because there was that many people uh but beforehand and after they had you know a big party and they had beautiful food there they had wonderful time they had popcorn and drinks for everybody and uh, oh and tom kane was there and it was just so fun vanessa marshall was there steve bloom was there mary elizabeth was there with steve and it's and uh and taylor was there and tia was there and it was just a, a blast it was a great time seeing all all my friends and christopher sean was there from resistance who's a dear friend and his lovely wife and 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 Everybody uh, had a great time. Saw Seth Green there. It was just, it was just a fun time. Billy D was there. What a great time we all had, saying goodbye to the Skywalker saga, which I think is sad. I think that's very sad. But anyways, very strange uh, and weird and lovely and fun. But I thought all of you would like to hear the stories of that. So, oh, so that's what. So you get in and you first you go through this whole area. We you get your badges and security and the you know metal detectors and all that stuff and. And then we had a handler that took us on and we go through and you get your picture taken for the press and you can go and search like Getty images and you can see pictures of me and me with my family and me with Catherine Tabor and all of that. And then, so you go through the pictures and that's always weird because all the photographers are there and like, James, look over here, over here, over James, James, over to the left and the left and the right and the left and the left and over here. And you know, like, okay, whoa. And it's flashes and everything. And I, you know, I wore a black suit, the tux and the scarf and the thing. And I was very, you know, wintered out and all that. I hope I looked all right. Then we go to the, the fan area. That was my favorite part was going walking through the fan. So if you're a fan and you listen, because some of you said that you listen to my podcast, so thank you so much. And I got to meet so many of you. So if you know, if I met you in line there for where all the fans were, then you know who you are. And that was my favorite part of the evening. And I'm not just saying that because you're all listening. <laughs> because the best part of Star Wars is the fans. It really is. And so, and my daughter was like, I just loved watching you with all the fans, daddy. It was so fun. And you're so great with them. And they're so great with you. And they cheered for you. And, and, and it was, you know, we could sign things for everybody and do pictures and selfies and stuff. And it's just, that's the fun of it. It reminded me of like a little mini Star Wars celebration when I was hosting and stuff. It just, everybody was fun and they were all in costume and then they all got to go in and see it with us. And, and so that was fun. And so it was just a great time. As you know, Star Wars should be family. Star Wars is family, and that's what it should be about. And so great thanks to Tracy Canobio for making it happen, because I know Tracy's the one at Lucasfilm that really pushed for all of us voice actors to be able to be there. And, you know, the funny thing is, is I'm in the movie. I'm actually credited. I'm in the film. And I don't normally get an invite to unless I get invited to the friends and family thing. So it was really neat to get invited to the premiere. It's just very rare for voice actors to get invited to a premiere of a movie. Uh, even ones that they're in, but uh, I've been I've been very fortunate in that. So there you go. And speaking of premieres, so next Monday I get to go to another premiere, and that is the premiere of Kenobi, the short film that I made with Jamie Costa, and 
it, you know, I am so, f- and, and Jamie was there. I got to see him and we got a picture taken and everything. And uh, this, I can't wait for everybody to see that film because that I have, I've seen that as well. And it's so fun. It's a 15 minute short. It's going to be available very soon. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if they've announced when, so I'm not going to say when, but I am, I'm going to the little premiere of it. Although I think it's probably safe to say, you know, it'll be a good Christmas gift for everybody to see the short film Kenobi and it'll be on YouTube. And that's really exciting. And I can't wait for you all to see it. And, uh, you get to see me as a bad guy in that one. And, and I, I voiced bad guys in, uh, Rise of Skywalker too. Here's a funny thing. Here's what happened though. Last night, here's a, here's a kind of a faux pas for the announcer. I don't know who the announcer was for the night and announcers have changed. It used to be, you know, like Mr. Announcer guy, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, you know, and, and all that. But, uh, instead it was like a guy, Hey everybody, welcome to the rise of Skywalker. And it was very like loose and just a, I don't know, kind of a very casual announcer. But at the end of JJ Abrams, Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iger speaking, and they all gave really nice speeches. J.J. Abrams gave a wonderful speech, and he was very funny and and lovely and 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 all that. At the end of that, they say, "Please take your seats." The movie, uh, "The Return of Skywalker," is about to begin. <laughs> we all went, "The Return of Skywalker." It's I think it's called Rise of Skywalker, isn't it? Which is kind of funny because Revenge of the Jedi got changed to Return of the Jedi, and this person said Return of Skywalker instead of Rise of Skywalker announcing it to the public for this. That was very funny. Anyways, some little faux pas, but you know, uh, and if you all watched it, did you watch it on the live stream? If so, you got to see David Collins interview Catherine Tabor, D Bradley Baker, myself and Matt Lanter on the blue carpet. And we got interviewed and we had fun and we just had a great time getting pictures and seeing each other and having a good time hanging out and being a part of the star Wars universe again, one last time. I mean, there may be, we may do some little thing you never know for the clone wars returning in, in February, which we're very excited about. And that would be like our last hurrah, but this really was kind of a, a last little big party, huge party. It was, I mean, I can't even imagine. I have no idea the bazillions of dollars Disney spent on this evening last night and to close the entire street down. And they, they tented the whole thing in and the whole thing looked like a sky. I mean, you can see it all online. But it looked like stars up in the sky. It was amazing. So kudos to Bob Iger and all the money they spent to put that all together. They did a fantastic job. And I know the movie is going to do very, very well. I will say this. This is the only thing I will say. It is my favorite of all three of the new Star Wars films. There you go. Okay. There, that's, that's all I'm going to say. It's my favorite of them, of them all. And, um, and, and it was a beautiful, wonderful, wonderful time. And I was so immensely grateful to Disney and Lucasfilm for inviting me because I know I'm, I'm just a lowly voice actor. So I, and I don't say that as I'm just, I'm kind of joking around when I say that. Okay. That's all. So don't everybody think I'm being negative or anything. I got to watch it because I, I have like, if I say anything that comes off, like I'm, I'm putting something down or giving my opinion that isn't exactly what other people's opinion is. I'll get letters from you all saying getting mad at me for being negative like the last person that gave me this one saying i was so negative i mentioned it on the, on the show a couple of times and i wrote him a personal letter saying i'm so sorry you felt that way that wasn't my intention and i really tried to apologize and you know what never heard back from him so i guess i lost him as a listener or a viewer or a, a, a follower and if so i'm really sorry i didn't want that but if you're still listening hey dude write me another email I, look, we can all agree to disagree. Anyways, I'm off on a tangent. I'm not going to go there. I don't want to be Mr. Negative. It's just the last time I said anything that somebody thought was negative about Star Wars, which was Galaxy's Edge, which wasn't negative. I can't wait. I can't wait. Here's the other thing that I can't wait for now. Rise of the Resistance is, uh, you know, out in Florida. And if you're in that area, you know, you can ride it now. And it comes, it's going to open here in uh, Disneyland in California very soon, next month in, in January. And the cat's finally out of the bag. I am Lieutenant Beck, the voice of Lieutenant Beck, the Mon Calamari that takes you on your entire journey in the new fantastic, fantastic ride at Galaxy's Edge, which is called Rise of the Resistance. So I am Lieutenant Beck. Yes, this is Lieutenant Beck, here to take you on your journey. So I have added yet another British voice, very different from Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm very different from Jedi Master Plo Koon. I'm also Lieutenant Beck, a Mon Calamari that takes you on your journey. Pretty fun, huh? 
See, that's the life of a voice actor. I get to be all these different characters, uh, all different British voices with different textures and tones. And I love that. And I just had so much fun. I recorded the, most of the dialogue a couple years ago for that. And then every year I would come in for pickups and they've, they've been working on this ride for so long. It is a beautiful, amazing ride. I can't say enough good things for about it. And I know everybody's going to love it. And it's just going to be so much fun. So there you go. See, I'm Mr. Positive. I'm not negative, which I've never been negative about any of it. Anyways, there you go. Hope you all are enjoying this little ranty chatcast. There's so many emails I want to read, but the truth is I'm going to have to save them all for the next episode because I've got some wonderful emails. So many of you have been writing some wonderful, wonderful emails, uh, and I want to answer all of them. And I will have to... I want to do a longer episode where I answer all these emails and, and, and read so many wonderful emails to all of you. But, you know, it's the Christmas season. So just because it is Christmas and stuff and next week is Christmas, I'm, I, I'm, there, there won't be an episode next week because it's Christmas and I'm, you know, it's Wednesday is Christmas Day and I've got, I'm going to be spending time with my family and I'm trying to, and we're doing work around our house here and uh, there, I mean, we're painting walls and doing work and doing stuff there and I've got a bunch of projects I'm working on that I cannot tell you all about, but I'm, I'm gone a lot uh, in the studio and, and, and voicing things. And so, so the Jack cast is going to become a little more sporadic again. Okay. Uh, come out here and there, maybe short versions. I mean, uh, sometimes there may be just a real quick little episode that just says, Hey, I'm, I'm here and here's what's happening this week, but thank you type stuff because I want to make sure I get you episodes, but at the same time, I don't really have a ton of time for it all right now while I'm doing other things that are pulling me away from being able to do all this. So this episode is really just to kind of say I had a great time at the premiere last night of Rise of Skywalker. I think everybody's going to love the movie. I had a great time. I'm so excited that Rise of the Resistance is announced now, and I am the voice of Lieutenant Beck in that, and you can watch it online. You can see the YouTube videos. People have been sending them out. The Mon Calamari guy that looks like Akbar. It's a trap. Uh, is me the voice of? Uh, some people thought it was Tom Kane. Some people thought it was Stephen Stanton. It is me. It's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Lieutenant Beck, and it's great fun. And I, I'm so excited about that. I'm so excited about uh, everybody seeing and hearing Rise of Skywalker. And my voice is in there, and there's some other surprises in there. And also, Clone Wars is coming back. I'm very excited about that. And I'm very excited, very, very excited about Kenobi, the short film by Jamie Costa that is coming out very, very soon, this next week, I believe. Although I can't say for sure. I don't know if they've made any big announcements yet as to when it will be viewable, but I think they have. But I am going to the premiere of that next week as well, and I'll put some st stuff on my Instagram and Twitter. Follow me, please, on Instagram and Twitter if you have not. Take a moment and go there. I'm not really on Facebook much, but you can follow me there as well. And my Instagram is linked to my Facebook. So whatever I post on Instagram goes onto my Facebook. But I don't look at the in Facebook all that much anymore. But uh, anyways, J-A-T Actor, Jat Actor is my handle for Instagram and Facebook and also for Twitter. And I'm on Twitter more than anything. I know Twitter is kind of old school now, everybody, but I like Twitter. I like that you can put links there. I like that you can post videos there. I like that you can do things that you cannot do as easily on Instagram, you know, 60 second videos and no links and all that stuff. I, I don't like that. I don't know why all of you love Instagram so much, but whatever. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm on Twitter. If you really want to talk to me, you can. Plus, there's a Twitter account for the Jatcast as well. All right. That's pretty cool, right? The Jatcast is at the Jatcast, T H E. J-A-T-C-A-S-T, the Jatcast. And you can ask me questions on the Jatcast Twitter one. Let's, in fact, let's see. Let me, let me go to Twitter right now. Let's see if anybody's asked me any questions on that account. I'm going to switch my account. Switch, switch, no, wait, switch accounts. Switch accounts, there it is. The Jatcast. Let's see. Let's see if anybody said anything or asked me anything. You know, you all can ask me questions there on the Jatcast. Uh, nope. Nope, no questions. Uh, so, you know, uh, well, somebody asks, be honest with me, is Johnny Test coming back? I, I don't know. Is it? You tell me. If you're asking, you must know something. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, nobody else is asking. You can ask me questions there on the uh, James Arnold Taylor James Arnold Taylor Twitter feed or on my Twitter feed for this show, The Jatcast. Um, but anyways, okay, so we're going to start wrapping it up here soon, but I hope you're drinking water. I hope you're breathing deep. I hope you're thinking positive. I hope you're saying your positive things. I hope you're believing, 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 because I believe in all of you. I, I, this is a quick episode and then we're going to take a break. So the Jackcast will be gone f until next year, <laughs> but see, that's only a week or so 
till next year. And I'll be back with all new episodes here in season two. And then the show may become a little more sporadic as I try to basically just make really great episodes for you and put them out when I can. Because as much as I love doing all this, um, finding the time to do it lately has been harder. And I want to make the shows really count for all of you when I make them. And your letters have been so wonderful and I want to reply to all of them, respond to all of them and everything too. So that's why the show may get a little breaky break while I try to make the best episodes I can for you all. Okay? Ooh, um, let's close this this episode. This very quick. This is a Jack Cast Mini. Let's close this episode with day number 328 from my book, Jack 365, which is available on Amazon.com. Makes a perfect Christmas gift. It's still not too late to get a copy of James Arnold Taylor's book, Jack 365, 365 Daily Inspirations for the Pursuit of Your Dreams at Amazon.com. Here's the cool thing about my book. It's a journal for your thoughts, dreams, and goals, as well as a thing to inspire you and also to help you inspire other people because you take it and you practice it. You put it into practice, you forward it, and you spread the good news of paying it forward with positivity. And that's the whole point of the book. So turning to page 328, it says, count the ways. How many things were, quote, unachievable at some point in your life that are now second nature to you? Ooh, that's a great question, huh? There's more than you think and more inside of you to come. So accomplishments are behind and ahead of you. Rejoice in all of them. List some past unachievables. What do I mean by this? There's so many things that we do in life that we're like, no, I can never do that. Let me give you a real simple, simple example. I think of with my daughter. When she was little, she was so afraid to jump in and dive into the swimming pool. And she was afraid. And I, I was the same way. I'm sure many of you were the same way. And you thought, I'll never be able to do that. You know, and then one day she did it. And now it's just second nature. She wouldn't even think of it. She just, that's how she gets in the pool, dive in. There's so many things that we dive into now that at one point in time in our lives, it was very hard to do from tying our shoes to, you know, I don't know, jumping in a swimming pool, but uh, to drawing or writing or creating or doing the job we do or driving a car or riding a bike or any of these things that are now second nature to us. So when you think of these other things in your life that you're like, I just don't know if I can do them. Remember, you probably can if you really apply yourself and believe, okay? doesn't mean we can accomplish everything that we set out to in life, but there are so many things that we can, okay? Oh, look at that. I just got a text from Vanessa Marshall. And she sent me some little hearts. Isn't that nice? See, I send scripture out to my friends. Now, again, we'll close the show uh, with that then. So I close with Jot365. I send, so what I do is I text to all my friends um, from Vanessa Marshall to Matt Lanter to Catherine Tabor and, and beyond, uh, Jamie Costa, all my friends that I know are Christian. I send them pieces of scripture on a couple times a week basis, you know? I just send it whenever I'm thinking of them. And today I sent from uh, the book of Ephesians, one of my favorite things. This is a long one. I'm going to close the show with this. It says, so this is, so Paul was the writer of the book of Ephesians. Paul was an apostle of Jesus. And Paul was a guy that didn't believe in Jesus at all. In fact, he hated Christians and he was, he was helping to have them killed and such. And his name was Saul. And then as, as the Bible tells us, Paul, Saul was knocked off his horse by Jesus after Jesus died and came back to life and resurrected and knocked him off his horse and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me and my people? And then he blinded him for three days and then brought his sight back to him. And when he brought his sight back, he was able to see and, and understand that Jesus actually was who he said he was. So Paul wrote most of the New Testament. There are two different big books in the Bible, all of it. There's 66 books in total in the Bible, but there are the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the New Testament is all of the stories about Jesus and his disciples and followers. And Paul wrote some amazing stuff in the Bible. And in Ephesians, he talks about putting on the full armor of God. So I talked to you all about like breathing deep and getting, you know, saying your little uh, positive affirmations and drinking water and believing in yourselves and such. Well, Paul said to put on the full armor of God, and this is what he would tell all the Christians that believed. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. 
And I truly believe that. I truly believe we are battling against resistance that comes from uh, darker, darker, darker times than us and darker things uh, in, in different realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to the, all of this, take up the shield of faith, which with you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's peoples. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. That's a lot. But what he's saying is ready yourself for every challenge that you're going to go after. So, you know, even if you're not a Christian, I hope you don't mind me reading a little scripture here for you, but I'm a Christian. This is my show and this is what I do. This is what I believe in. And I just, I don't do it to push it on anybody. I do it to say, this is who I am. So you can understand if you're not a Christian, how a Christian works. Just like I try to understand people that aren't Christian and how they work. I want, I think it's important for all of us to know uh, and, and understand each other. And, and like each other and like each other's, you know, uh, respect each other's belief systems, at least. So I, as a Christian, try to put on all these things each day by, you know, being honest and true and, and knowing that there's things and people and stuff that will come against me. But as long as I, I, I use love and not evil to, to fight it, not judgment, but acceptance of that not everybody is like me. And I, I, I try to turn the other cheek, but also be firm in what my beliefs are. It's a, it's a real balance. And so that's what I try to do. So I sent that scripture off to all my friends today. And Vanessa Marshall just texted me some hearts. And that's how, and because she was thankful of me sending that scripture to her. So there you go. This is the Jatcast. It's a Jatcast mini. I'm sorry it's so short today, but I'm, I'm glad I could tell you some little stories about my time last night. And I'm sure I'll have new adventures tonight going to see the movie again. I got to see I got to see the whole movie again. I'm going to have more thoughts and I know what to listen for and watch for now too. So there you go. I hope everybody has a wonderful wonderful Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to everybody and a happy new year. The James Arnold Taylor podcast will be back next year, 2020. All right? Coming up with it just just another week or so. I'm just taking this next week off. But uh, we will be back with more very very soon. And Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, God bless you, Feliz Navidad. That's that's as Spanish as I get. My wife and daughter are very fluent, but me, not me. Anyways, there you go. Merry Christmas, God bless you. Oh, Mr. Announcer Guy, you got to do the uh, legal mumbo jumbo the last time, the last time of 2019. Are you ready? Yeah, man, here we go. Talking to Myself, the James Arnold Taylor Podcast is a production of YumiGo Inc. Recorded at Chat Studios. Engineered, written, recorded, and produced by, you guessed it, James Arnold Taylor. All voices are parody and should be construed as entertainment only. All music and sound effects used with permissions and licenses through backtracks, digital juice, production tracks, and partners in rhyme. James Arnold Taylor's Talking Myself, the podcast, copyright 2019, all rights reserved. Well done. So next time we got to change it to 2020. That's a trip, dude. <laughs> All right. Uh, happy uh, happy New Year, Mr. Announce Guy. Merry Christmas. You too, dude. All right. We'll see you all next time on the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. And <gasps> goodbye. Merry Christmas. <laughs>